We have got two British pairs. They're kind of in competition for the pair slot in the British team. Cambridge on the right of your picture. And on the left of your picture, Leander Club and Oxford Brooks. So there's all sorts of things we can talk about during this race, Tom. But um, I think the tension, you could cut the air with a knife. I, I was talking to Rob Baker, uh, coach of the Cambridge Bear, just before the race. I said, how are the boys? He said, they're feeling good. And he said, they know what's coming. And I think partly knowing what's coming is Bugowski and Glenister are going to explode off the stop. They've been doing really quick times at Cavisham in the first 500 metres, apparently. Look, if you're the underdog, you've got to get out fast and try and scare what is perceived to be the, the faster of the two crews. And that's exactly what Josh and Harry are going to try and do. You can hear there Sarah Winkler's umpire just giving them a bit of an early warning and they're adjusting their line. But if they can get out to the barrier with their noses in front, we all know at Henley anything's possible. How does Josh Bugowski look at you now? The, we're looking at the 31-year-old in the stroke seat. How does he look to you? He looks focused, absolutely focused, eyes straight down the middle of the boat, and he's going to know that if they can put down a marker here, there's no reason why they can't ascend up into, like you say, Martin, the, the pairing for Great Britain. Of course, Tom George and, and Ollie Wynne Griffith in shot there. Cambridge Blues, they've been rowing together all year, actually, I think six and five in the in the Cambridge Blue Boat, so they're going to know each other exceptionally well. Bradley schoolboys, there's no better pairing in terms of synchronicity, but the power that Josh and Harry on the far side of the screen have could come into play, especially in this headwind. Well, it looks like the rumours coming out of Cavisham have been correct, that uh, Bugowski and Glenister have been burning up the first quarter of the race. We see the British blades there. There's Harry Glenister furthest away from you, the 26-year-old from Meander. Not quite made it into the British team yet, but he makes pairs go very fast, doesn't he? He does indeed, he does indeed, and I think he's right on the cusp, Martin. He was probably unfortunate to miss out on a couple of selection points earlier in the season and certainly in a couple of seasons back. But if he can, as I say, if he can get ahead and, and, and beat the pairing from Cambridge, there's no reason why the, uh, the hierarchy of British rowing can't stand up and take notice. And with a, a partner like Josh Bogowski, of course, bronze medalist in Tokyo, he's got no better compatriot for this. Yeah, Josh Bogowski rode at bow in that eight, of course, Tom George was in the three seats, Oli Wynne Griffith, now bow in the Cambridge pair. Swap sides, there he is, Tom George closest to us, Oli Wynne Griffith further away. He rode in the sixth seat of the British eight in Tokyo, took them to a bronze medal. And there was a bit of shenanigans at the finish, wasn't there? Josh Bogowski had a go at uh, Jürgen Grobler and the way he was coaching, and uh, the guys, including Ollie, didn't think it was the right time to do it. And it's all sort of, you know, blown over now, and uh, Josh and Ollie have uh, made the best of friends. But it adds a little spice to this encounter, doesn't it? It does, it does. We love a narrative in sport, right? And it just under, undercuts all of the uh, all of the friendly rivalry that we think exists. And I'm sure that both of these uh, crews, the four athletes from Cavisham, they'll be training together day in, day out, they'll want bragging rights. You know, nothing else, the Goblets, of course, is a coveted trophy in its own right, but bragging rights is almost as important as that in the context of this race. Bugowski hasn't looked out there. Glenister did look out. I don't know whether that means that Cambridge have made a little move because uh, that start advantage, I think it's kind of stuck at the moment. You can see, I think, Cambridge on the left of your picture. Tom George with that fearsome 2K ergo score. There he is, Tom George. What an amazing uh, talent he is. And uh, 539.7, was it he pulled on the 2K Ergo test? Absolutely monstrous. I mean, those are scores that are just inconceivable to a mere mortal like me, Martin. It's uh, it's a uh, horsepower to, uh, to burn in that Cambridge crew. And I think you called it beautifully, actually. It looks like the pair on the left-hand side of, of Tom George and Ollie Wing Griffith have just stolen a march. I was talking to T. Ran actually, Tom Ransley, uh, gold medalist from the 2016 British Eight, and uh, he said about Josh Bugowski, Bug, he said, you know, what he's got is a great start. What's important for him is what they do in the middle of the course, and it seems like uh, T. Ran's prediction is, is coming true because that's a fantastic move the Cambridge pair have made. And, and, you know, when you hear Rob Baker, their coach, say they know what's coming, you think, well, they expected that move off the start, and they kind of kept their powder dry and they've moved very smoothly through to, what is it, a one-length advantage. And, you know, I guess these two pairs are going to race again at Lucerne on the Roxanne in a week's time, but, you know, effectively, this is a race-off. It will be, what, 2-1 to the Cambridge pair, and they will cement their place in the British team as the men's pair. 100%. If you look at the two crews, I mean, Cambridge have absolutely motored away here. It's, it's well over length lead now. That's been a stupendous sort of second quarter of the race 
from Tom and, and Ollie. But if you look at the two pairs, Cambridge just looks smoother. And, and that might be that they've had longer to row together. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, they've been rowing together since age 15, so know each other probably uh, with a level of intimacy that a lot of professional athletes don't have. But they just look that bit more synchronised. They look smoother at either end of the stroke, and that's paying dividends. They are the best of friends, actually. I saw them, you know, they were out having coffee before their races in the first World Cup in Belgrade, where they beat uh, Spain and Serbia to take the gold medal and uh, they really are friends, they really are mates, and they've got a great relationship with their coach, Rob Baker. So Leander really throwing it in now, Josh Bogowski, he hasn't looked out the boat, look at his focus, look at his concentration, Glenn Lister's looking round, he's got to tell Josh Bogowski where they are, he can feel his stroke, man, can't he, just urging him on. Yeah, there's a look of intensity in the eyes of Josh Bogowski, and he's gonna know that, like I said earlier, bragging rights are critical here, but if, <laughs> If Josh and Harry want to come back here, now's the time to make the move. I think Harry Glenn has a little look over his shoulder there. He knows if they don't go now, if they don't really do something extraordinary as they come up towards the enclosures that this race is run. So it's the pair from Cambridge University, Tom George and Ollie Wynne Griffith, leading the pair from Oxford Brooks and Leander, looking slightly as if they need to find another gear. We're two thirds of the way down, coming up to three quarters of the way down this opening race after tea time at Henley in the Silver Goblets and Nichols Challenge Cup. It's the semi-final, the right to get into the final and race potential matchup against the New Zealanders if they do get through their semi-final later on. But it looks good for Cambridge now, Tom. Absolutely, but well, we love a GB New Zealand pairing in the small boats. There's nothing better than a final uh, of that calibre. And at the moment, Tom George, Ollie Wing Griffith just rowing towards us. Absolutely beautiful example of the clinic how to row a pair, which obviously we all know is probably the most difficult boat to row in the entire set, putting on an absolute masterclass here in front of the stewards. Yeah, Tom George really smooth. And I think all credit to Ollie Wing Griffith just making a call there because he's changed sides. It's not the easiest thing to do to change from uh, port side or stroke side, port side in America to starboard side or bow side. And he's done that with some ease. You can hear the crowds. Look at the guys in the back there clapping their boys home. Yeah, Pogowski and Glenister still fighting, fighting hard, but it's that smoothness in the Cambridge pair. As we look out from our commentary position, they pass the progress board. That's the last 10 strokes of the race. Pogowski and Glenister charging hard. I think they're not going to be able to close that gap, though. It's the smoothness of the Cambridge pair coming up to the finish. This was one of the race-offs that everybody was waiting for. The race after team drew the crowds back to the bank. And it's Cambridge University win the semi-final of the Silver Goblets and Nickel Challenge Cup. George and Wing Griffith beat Glenister and Bugowski. Well, it's testament to the guys from Cambridge. They were able to ease off in those last two or three strokes, really enjoy the row home, soak up the admiration of the crowd, who, by the way, we could hear them shouting for their boys. And you can see there the look on Tom George's face. He is absolutely delighted. He knows how important that win was.